We used to think the biggest challenges while sailing around the world would be storms, big waves, and strong winds. Well, guess what's bigger than these waves? What? We are bigger than these waves. Yeah, metaphorically. Metaphorically speaking. But sailing is only half the battle. The other half is maintaining our sanity while doing boat work in less than ideal circumstances and on a super tight budget. We basically sat down and just came up with a list of absolutely every project that we possibly could want to do. My brain is going to explode. You want a beer? <laughs> I want a beer. <laughs> I think our biggest challenge here is going to be just to not get overwhelmed, not get too stressed out, taking every single day one step at a time. Previously on Project Atticus. After spending three years refitting our fixer-upper sailboat, we left the United States with only $2,000 and the goal of working while we cruised. We made it as far as Isla Mujeres, Mexico before we ran out of money and had to find work. For the next year, we did freelance boat repair jobs until we saved up enough cash to cast the lines and sail south to explore the Western Caribbean. After many days at sea crossing the Caribbean, we finally made it to Bocas del Toro, Panama, where we will be preparing Atticus for our biggest challenge yet, crossing the Pacific Ocean. Good morning. So what's, uh, what you got the adventure bag for? <laughs> you know me so well. <laughs> Well, we've been in Bocas for about a month now, which is crazy. The time has just flown by and we love it here. Um, but we've been working hard, so today we're gonna take the day off and uh, try to find a little secluded beach that we heard about from friends. Nice. So yeah, adventure day. Cool. Let's do it. So this is my favorite part of the marina. I spent a lot of time in here. <laughs> I probably take like three showers a day. I think they think I'm cuckoo. One thing I love about this marina is that it's so natural and there's water all around and greenery everywhere. And I just close my eyes and I can hear birds and all these crazy little insects chirping. And I don't know, it's just so nice to be at a marina that really embraces nature. So another cool part of this marina is that we're on this kind of inaccessible little peninsula. So it's almost like being on an island of our own. Um, and so to get to town, which is over there, we actually have to take a water taxi. <laughs> so I'm getting ready to call the water taxi service and have them come pick them up. Hola, buenas. Estamos en Marina Boca y necesitamos ir al pueblo. about five minutes to get here. Yeah, the marina actually has its own water taxi that shuttles people to shore uh, certain times of the day. But if we don't want to go on that schedule, we just pay $2 per person to do a water taxi. little empanada stand. We usually get two chicken empanadas and one coffee for the grand total of three dollars. <laughs> you know a lot of people ask us like how we're able to cruise on such a tight budget and like this is a perfect example of like as long as you're in you know not the first world like you can actually do things like eat out you know for almost no money at all so parts of Bocas. It's the main square and anytime I come here there's always families and kids and dogs just hanging out. Oh, I love it. And there's these huge trees that you can get this amazing shade and nice cool breeze. Oh, so nice. Yeah, so our main objective here in Panama is we want to make sure that we can cross the Pacific next year. And so we've got a lot of boat work that we need to get done before we feel like Atticus is up to that task. Mm -hmm. And so when we first got here, the plan was to just check out Bocas and then continue on to uh, a place called Shelter Bay 
Basically, it's near Cologne, it's closer to Panama City. When we first got here, we just fell in love with mm -hmm. this town. And so we kind of had to sit down and have a discussion about what our plans were going to be. Well, bud, what do you think? Is it time to get a move on, sail for Shelter Bay? You know, I kind of love it here. I'm hesitant to go. <laughs> yeah, why is that? First of all, the town is awesome. Yeah. Uh, and for me, provisioning here is super easy. And the marina here is not only super nice, but affordable. And if we stick around here, it seems like there's a ton of really cool uh, like day sales we could do. So we could be getting work done, and then when we're super burnt out, just head out and do some exploring. Yeah, I mean, good point, but it's really like quite a bit more expensive to get stuff shipped here. Mm. If we were in the Cologne area, we could actually get stuff shipped duty-free, um, but out here, they don't have a way for you to do that because like a customs agent has to come with your stuff. And then plus, because we're in the middle of nowhere, there's n less material is available locally. Which, I mean, that's a big deal, because we're gonna, we got a lot of projects that we're gonna be doing, and it's, you know, we need a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, that comes at a high cost, because the main town over there is Cologne, which it sounds like it's a, not a nice place. There's a lot of crime there. Also, the marinas there are a lot more expensive than here. They're almost twice as expensive. Wow. And the boat yard is even more than twice as expensive. Yeah, I'm thinking we should just stay here. It's just so nice. Mm -hmm. I really love it here. And if we can figure out and be creative about shipping and boat work here, I'd like to try. Well, let's do it. <laughs> home sweet home. Yeah, that's right. For the next, like, what, six months? Yeah, I'm really excited. Well, to get to our secluded beach today, we're going to rent some bikes, but before that, we're going to get some beer. So once we figured out that we were going to stay in Bocas, we had to kind of decide what projects we were going to tackle during this refit. What we did is we basically sat down and just came up with a list of absolutely every project that we possibly could want to do. Like in a perfect world, everything we'd want done on Atticus, put that down on a list. Then we went through that list and had to prioritize everything, figuring out like what was important, what wasn't totally necessary. And then the last step was to literally go through the high priority items on that list and cut that in half. Because in our opinion and in our experience, we've learned that the biggest problem that you can have in a refit is trying to take on too many projects in too short a time. On our bike shop, we're gonna get two bikes and to our secluded beach. So, even though we did a pretty good job narrowing down our project list and prioritizing everything, we still have a whole bunch of work to do while we're here in Panama. First off, we want to install a new removable inner solent stay so that we could put the Genoa on a roller furler. Also, Desiree is working with Super Sail Makers to make sure that the sail is reefable and she's gonna install some chafe patches to the sails. We need to cut the bottoms of the masts off because we have cracking at the bases and have a new base fabricated for both masts. We also wanna install a new bob stay chain plate, probably make it out of titanium because it's been leaking a lot in the past. We need to install a new gooseneck for the mizzen boom and replace all of the shroud tangs on both masts because they're a little bit old and not in the best condition. We've got a handful of leaks that we want to fix. We also want to install a new water maker. We need to come up with some sort of a stowage solution for our stern anchor, as well as inspect and paint our main anchor chain. We're going to install a second fuel tank pickup, as well as install a parallel fuel filter system. And we're going to have some security bars fabricated that will fit over the forward hatch, as well as the companionway, for when we're cruising in areas known for crime against cruisers. So the next step was figuring out what we needed to order, materials, supplies, and all the stuff we'd need to tackle these projects. What you working on, bud? I'm literally going through each project and mentally going through each step, <laughs> trying to think like, okay, what happens here? Like, what happens if this doesn't go well? What am I gonna need? How many of those am I gonna need? Mm -hmm. And I'm, and then like the moment I mentally walk through a, a project then I'm on to the next one and, and it's just, it's taking me a long time. I'm sure 
I'm going to screw up. Like, I'm <laughs> sure there's going to be things that I, I forgot. And I'm terrified of that. I'm going to be like halfway through a project and I'm going to be like, I need this one thing. Mm -hmm. And like, I cannot get it in Panama, <laughs> you know? It's the biggest price to pay for doing projects and boat work while cruising. It's just the materials and the supplies and the stuff, mm -hmm. you know? So anyway, wish me luck. Good luck, bud. It's got to be like the gnarliest cemetery I've ever seen in my life. So getting stuff shipped to Boca del Toro is going to be a huge challenge. Um, it's already really expensive to get stuff shipped to Panama in general and Bocas del Toro is like out in the middle of nowhere basically. So it costs an additional fee to get it from like Panama City to here. So what our plan is, is we're actually going back to the States to go to the United States Sailboat Show in Annapolis. And so we're going to try and take back as much stuff as we can on the flight from the United States to Panama. I think my favorite thing about this island is it's literally jungle all the way up to the beach. Yeah. You know what I mean? Man, this path just feels like it keeps on going on and on and on. Yeah. It's so pretty. This is a massive beach. I know, and the sand is so soft. It's I had no cushion. I know, look at that. And there's like almost no footprints. <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah, this is like Daytona with nobody on right. it. Right. You know? yeah. And then like a freaking jungle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like coming right up to it. Yeah. This is our backyard for the next five months. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, huh? Well, you ready for that beer? Huh, yeah. <laughs> Tell the rental company I did that. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, bud. Well, cheers, bud. <laughs> what an awesome place. Yeah. Not gonna lie, it, it is super overwhelming to have this daunting project list ahead of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Out. <laughs> you know, at the same time, when we were in Key West and we did our, our big refit, like where we actually brought Atticus back from the grave, um, like I was super stressed out that whole time. Like you remember, I was I was <laughs> terrible. We may have almost broke up yeah, like, like five seven times. times, seven <laughs> times. Yeah, I was so afraid of failure. I just ate, drank, slept, breathed like doing boat projects. Mm -hmm. And like we would only take one day off a week, if that. And like I was like a slave driver, and and so a lot of our experience in Key West was kind of negative mm -hmm. because of that. And and I just was so worked up all the time. And, and so since then, I kind of realized that life is not what happens once you accomplish your goals, right? Life is what happens when we're struggling, fighting day in day out to accomplish the goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think our, our biggest goal for our time in Panama this time around, now that we've kind of struggled through one refit and shake down cruises and, you know, just the trauma <laughs> of like figuring out how to have a happy marriage on a boat and not sink and yeah. go broke. <laughs> I think our biggest challenge here is going to be just to not get overwhelmed, not get too stressed out and try to be graceful and loving with ourselves about, you know, taking every single day, one step at a time. Not... And just appreciate our situation. Yeah, look at this, know? like, yeah. we need to... Like, not forget how beautiful this place is. Yeah. 
so. Yeah, I think we've come a long way since Key West. <laughs> yeah, I think we really have. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. Um, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and make sure that you click the little notification bell so you receive notifications when we come out with new episodes. Particularly because you're not going to want to miss next week's episode because Desiree gets naked and starts pole dancing in front of a bunch of Panamanian indigenous warriors. Wow. The Kuna as a way of like culturally bridging the gap between them and us. I cried, you know. Tragedy, there's romance, yeah. there's struggle. Yeah, exactly. It actually turns into a sci-fi at one point. Yeah, we travel to the future. Yeah, it's, uh, you're not gonna wanna miss that. We'll see you then on Thursday. <sighs> All right. Oh. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed hanging out with us in Bocas. Just want to let you know we will not be releasing an episode next week because we are going to be in the United States at the U.S. Sailboat Show in Annapolis. So if you want to hang out with us, check out our schedule, which I will link to below. We also wanted to thank a couple of new deckhand level patrons. So we got Luis Estrada and Richard Haig, Joseph Pinkston and Kevin Sanders, Papa Stevo and Randy Burns, Danielle and Joshua Romay, as well as Richard Oz. And also Carl and Karen Duan and Tom Murphy, Edward L. Osterwold and Brian Nicholas, Chris McClure, Frank Everett, and Shannon Dardar. We also wanted to give a birthday shout out to my brother, Cushy Pushy. Yeah, happy birthday, Tommy. Hope you had a good one. We'll catch you guys in two weeks.